December 14th um, zoning board hearing. Um, I asked members that review the minutes of the last meeting, the last meeting here, not the large one that was upstairs. We have a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion by John to approve. I have a second. I'll second. Second, Mark. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Um, a reminder that January 17th will be the continuation of the 40B um, application, and that'll be strictly designated towards traffic. So I encourage anybody in the community that has um, not had the opportunity to show up or to uh, review the documents, they are on the website, and uh, they're uh, designated under Rob Sham Village. So with that, um, we have one hearing tonight. So is the applicant here? Yes, Why don't you yes, come sir. on up while I read the announcement. Uh, this is on the application of a Beverly Dees of 59 Mill Street, Hopedale, for a variance from provisions of Section 2.4 and or 2.5 of the uh, bylaw in relation to a 24,000 square foot parcel of land located on the northerly side of Ravina Street, known in number as 28 Ravina. The variance is sought to permit the division of the property into two lots, one lot containing the existing single-family dwelling and the other lot to be available for residential construction use. Um, on the application, it's indicating that the petitioner proposes to divide the existing parcel into two lots, one for the existing dwelling and the second available for construction of a single-family home. Uh, concerning the questions that were asked about the applicant, what circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape, and topography of the subject premises, which does not generally affect the other land of the zoning district, the applicant states that the premises consists of a long rectangular lot with frontage on separate streets on the front and the back lot lines. The existing single-family dwelling is located in the far south Lee corner of the parcel. Um, the question was asked, if the variance is not granted, what hardship would it be caused uh, uh, containing the circumstances described above? The applicant uh, stipulates that a substantial portion of the property will be uh, rendered unusual, un unusable and the value of the back portion of the parcel will be lost. Concerning the question, state why, why you feel a grant of the variance will not cause substantial detriment to the public good. The applicant states the proposed use of the pr property is permitted by the zoning bylaw consistent with the uses of surrounding parcels, and the proposed lots would be a complement with the intensity regulation of the zoning bylaw in all respects except minimum area and larger than most of the surrounding lots in the area. The proposal will not impact on uh, traffic congestion nor impair pedestrian safety. With that, there is a, um, looks like an assessor's map um, with the parcel. In addition to that, um, the planning board heard this, um, looks like it, it's dated November 7th, reviewed the, the petition and uh, on their scheduled meeting of November 7th and voted unfavorable, which three, three unfavorable, three opposed, and two in favor. See town plan a letter. Paraphrasing the town platter, planner indicates that the property originally consisted of six non-conforming parcels that have over the years been merged by zoning. Specifically, the proposal is to divide the existing conforming 24,000 plus or minus square foot lot into a 12,000, 26,000 square foot lot and a 12,000, 62,000 square foot lot. There are no circumstances related to the land itself that constitutes a hardship. Therefore, the recommended uh, 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 an unfavorable, uh, unfavorable report be sent off to this board. With that, Attorney Bertinazzi, please give us an indication of what you're trying to do. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Bertinazzi. I'm here for the petition of Beverly Deese. Um, we are here concerning this parcel on Ravenna Street. Um, this has been in Beverly's family since the mid-40s, I believe. I think it was acquired in two different parcels, in 44 and 45. Originally on the old uh, driving park subdivision development map, I think this was shown as uh, th what's left was, was shown as, as four different parcels. Um, the, the property is presently used for uh, single family uh, residents, um, and, um, and you know the family sort of long viewed that as a sort of a separate building lot that they've had in the family, you know, going back to the 40s. Uh, by way of orientation, the, pro the parcel runs between Ravenna Street and Naples Street 
uh, on the Hamilton Street end of both of those streets. Uh, it consists of approximately 24,000 square foot uh, parcel. Uh, the house is, is set right up on Ravenna Street. It's at the far front left-hand corner as you face it. Uh, in fact, it, you know, it, at present it would be built in, within the front and side yard setbacks, um, but it's pre-existing non-conforming. So I would suggest to you that it is, an, it is a, long, um, a long rectangular shaped parcel. The structure is sort of jammed up into the front portion, you know, le leaving a more open feeling with it. And it, and it, you know, it fronts on two separate streets on opposite ends, which is sort of a unique and odd configuration. Um, so uh, the, the notion was to divide it into two exactly equal, equal parcels. It, it could have been divided so that the front parcel met the area requirements, but that would have left the, the, um, the back portion sort of further uh, in, in problems. And we figured it made more sense to continue that back lot line um, along uh, that stretch to be consistent with the other parcels uh, in, the, in the neighborhood. Um, the parcel would meet all other requirements, all other intensity requirements in the bylaw, law, bylaw butt area. Although, uh, if you look at the map, you'll note that it's the same size or larger than most of the other. I think all of the other parcels that are depicted um, on that particular map, I think it's fairly, it would be fairly consistent with all of the other uh, parcels that are in the vicinity of this one. Um, it, it would, the proposal is to use it for single family residential use, which is permitted as of right. Um, there shouldn't be any real impact on, on traffic or impairment of, of pedestrian safety from a single family dwelling. I would suggest to you that this is a meritorious petition. I would ask that you act favorable on it. We're happy to answer whatever questions the board might have. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, board members sitting on this, of course, is going to be Timmy Walsh, uh, John, Charlie, myself, and Mark. Um, with that, uh, the board members will ask questions and then we'll open it up to the public. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, please feel free, if you need, to come up and take a closer look at the map. Please do so. I invite you to do so, so that you have a better feeling of kind of the area, what's going on. So uh, with that, I will start with um, Timmy. Do you have any questions, Tim? Um, I guess not at this moment for you guys right now. Okay. Go ahead. Um, what type of... Uh, Proposed house? Are you looking to build on that? Not build anything. You're not going to build any. No, you no, just no, want to divide the lot. Yeah. Eventually, the lot will be sold and developed. Eventually, yeah. Obviously, within the time period required by the bylaw, it would have to be developed. Right. Um, obviously, the, we're not asking for any kind of other relief in terms of 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 zoning. So it would have to be built within compliance with the other right. intensity regulations. So within the setbacks and the I, I just have a quick question concerning that um, you know I'm sure we're gonna probably talk a little bit about this but I can see that the shed is being proposed to, to be removed that's correct the house that's on fronting on Ravina does that conform to the front sides setbacks currently no it, it, it's actually on that plan you will see that that's pre-existing non-conforming correct so it's it's so it's pushed way up into the front hand corner of, of the lot. So it's within it's within the front yard setback and to a small extent the side yard. The garage setback. is exactly as located. Correct. And that conforms for the setback. Correct. Okay. The applicant have any issues concerning a limited restriction of uh, bedrooms? <clears throat> Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. You understand what he's saying? No. What does bedrooms oh, got to do with what? it? <coughs> so in the development of the house, they may, they may say that it can only be, uh, because of the size of the lot, they can only have a certain number of bedrooms in the house that's supposed to be built. Mm -hmm. Right. For instance, my recommendation may be a two-bedroom home versus a three-bedroom home. We're not going to build a house. No, I understand that. <coughs> but it would be, it would be the future development. For the future development. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But I'm saying if we 
we make a decision or try to make a decision depending on how the outcome of the meeting comes um, that that may come up um, you know and again I, I noticed that all the lots in the area are uh, similar in size I believe this is a plan that goes back to the 640s, 50s. Really, Dave, I've got a copy of the old drive. The old, the old, old one. Yeah, it's. Um, you have that? I think my friend. I found the bought that in '48. So the, I, I yeah, that okay, that's it. Yeah. I highlighted, but uh, the, the the one of them was bought, purchased in '45, and the other is '47. I have the deeds from the chain. Okay. If you're interested in okay. looking at them. Okay. Yeah, they're they're. This is all the old deeds. Okay. Correct. So originally. Um, Beverly's parents got uh, two of the lots, uh, I think, in 45, and, and then the, the remaining two in 47. So you on this plan here... Actually, that's 1906 <coughs> on that plan. Yeah, so, but we're, we're talking about on this plan, 5960, right? 5960 and I believe 94 and 95 or is it 93 and 94 there are extra lots on the original yeah and but I'm only showing a total of 80 inches 80 feet on well, I, I mean I think I didn't highlight I think it, I think it's all six of those I think okay it's, yeah that's what I'm thinking yep. it goes all the way down okay correct it, it was does anybody want to see this by the way <clears throat> as I say I have the old deeds if anyone's interested in seeing the same thing as that so I can see. Charlie? Yeah. Um, so what I'm seeing here is right now the lot is around 24,000. That's correct. And uh, obviously that's in <coughs> with it's within the regulations right now because I was, I believe here is 15,000 square feet. That's correct. Feet. Okay. All right. So the so the the notion is to divide it into two lots that would ultimately be again compliant in but for the area. And, and the notion was to keep them equal in size rather than making one compliant and one not compliant. So we didn't create a jog in that back lot line, and we didn't make one that was really teeny at the expense of the other. So both lots will be shy of approximately 3,000 square feet. That's correct. To the use regulations, but I, I suppose you have studied this, uh, Mr. Bertnazzi. Are there any other lots in this area that are meeting? Oh, I, not, these are the same size as all of the lots that that, that I have seen in the vicinity. I, I don't I don't know that any of them meet the current zoning regulations. In fact, if you look at the old 1906 plans, they were all. Is Rivena? Yeah. Seven thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, eleven thousand, seventy nine hundred. That's the biggest one. Across the street, nine thousand, seven ten thousand. Okay. And they, they would be consistent in size with everything that's around there. Right. And would your uh, applicant understand that if this were approved with certain restrictions on it, that that would carry with the land and that would then have to be obeyed by whoever was going to be the developer? Right? Yeah, and we have not discussed that because we didn't, you know, we didn't know the restrictions. I did explain to them that it's possible that the board could place restrictions on it, but I, we, we would certainly discuss all that and she would understand that. John, do you want the assessment map over here, the big one? No. <clears throat> All right, yes, we you. understand that whatever this board does would have to be adhered to as part of the right. Right. approval. <clears throat> Mark, you have any questions? Yeah, well, just basically, the biggest lot I'm seeing is we just, going by this proportionally, it's incorrect, because this is only 11,000 feet of floor. Your clients are actually bigger. Yes. And I don't have any questions. I mean, I guess it's certainly goes with the neighborhood. I mean, it's a nice flat lot. It, it, it would be, you know, perfect for development. It's, it really is. A Tim? No, I think I'll. I'll uh, any other board members for right now? If not, I'll turn it over to the public. I ask you if you're going to, uh, if, you, if you'd like to come up, uh, please uh, grab the microphone, name, address, so that we've got you on record. Please feel free to grab a microphone. Either one. Either one. Okay. You choose. It's close to Christmas. My name's Pat Salmon. I own that property at 13 Naples Street. And I was afforded the opportunity from a previous board to not subdivide our property, but to build on it. And we're very appreciative of that. I just have a couple of questions. You mentioned a single family property. I'm not sure which one that is because there's a two family on this lot and it has been for quite a while. Is that? Two family on what lot? Two family on what lot? 
the, the front. existing the existing one is a two family existing home. building the existing building is so a two this family this building here is a two family yep. yeah okay so so the backyard is where you are put the new lot correct yeah which uh, is going to now so where is a single family home that you're speaking of that's a family home will be constructed back here so you're building <laughs> you're building a new one correct that would be the, that would be neighbor oh street. let's take no, and I, I mean the. Uh, That's the I'm sorry, Reve Ravenna stay. Street. Yeah, that yes. that is a two-family house now, that right? Stay, correct. And you're okay. So you're referring single family here. Correct. Okay, good. Um, we come here. My wife and I come here with no objections at all to let somebody build a home there, as long as it meets the, the setbacks, like we had to adhere to, and everybody else has to adhere to. I don't have any issue with it. Thank you, sir. Anybody else care to be here, sir? No, sir. Okay. Um, my only my only comment would be um, as we try to help the process because of these lots are the way they are um, my thought would be to no more than a two-bedroom home I think that's more than reasonable um, in light of the vote I think we've had um, these situations before we've been limited to two fam uh, two bedroom yeah, I believe two bedrooms yeah. So specifically because there's a multifamily on on the other lot. Right. So well, with that, um, since I don't hear any other questions or concerns, you have the last word before we. Again, I would suggest to you that this is, uh, a, you know, meritorious petition. Um, uh, the, the neighbors don't seem to have any objections to it. Again, it's, it's, if you're driven by it, it's a beautiful lot. The development would be it would be a great place for a, a single family residence, and I, I would hope that you would grant the relief. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Uh, therefore, the hearing is closed, and what's the, um, what's the pleasure of the board? Well, the stipulation of two bedrooms sounds reasonable. Okay. So do I take that as a motion? There's a motion on the table to approve as submitted, predicated on uh, not more than a two-bedroom single-family house to be constructed. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. Second by John. Any other questions, concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, of course. With that, I guess I'll need a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Charlie. Yep. Seconded by Tim. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a good holiday, everybody.